Hey guys, so unfortunately after I filmed this, I realized none of my sound captured. <laughs> so I apologize, you get some voiceover. So what you see and what you hear is not the same. Um, so essentially what I wanted to do for you guys, since we are not doing uh, a departure lesson like we normally would since you're picking her up on Sunday. I wanted to film you a recap of what we're doing um, and what she's learned, but also things to expect when she goes home after her departure. Um, just that way it sets you guys up for success and keeps her skills and what she's learned sustainable and moving forward. Um, we'll cover in this video all of your skills, um, but generally I send home in a departure lesson, two to three, at most three, skills that I want you to practice. We'll cover everything by the time you're done with your uh, integration lessons, um, but those first few days home, that first week home, it's kind of like coming home from summer camp or sleepaway camp. Um, dogs do one of two things. They either get crazy zoomies or they sleep like they're in a coma. Um, and usually, especially the younger dogs, it's a little bit of both. <laughs> so I want to make sure that you're set up for success um, on how to keep those expectations that we've taught her here, keeping them at home, but integrating them into your lifestyle again. Now, with this, uh, one of the things that I'd recommend, and again, totally ignore my face because I am talking about some other stuff <laughs> versus the voiceover, uh, but essentially what I would recommend is that we do puzzle feeders, um, either morning or breakfast, uh, uh, morning or dinner, um, or you could do it both times. The idea is that we want to have something that engages that mental enrichment. Um, Olive is super smart. Um, and so one of the ways to help her drain that uh, mental energy is by doing a puzzle feeder. So this is one of the examples that I actually used uh, during her stay with us. So I would put her food in the little compartments and then she'd have to spin it to find her food. Um, she is very scent oriented. She loves digging. Um, she's got that wiener dog drive of, of burrowing and searching for things. The other thing you can do is a licky mat. So this is an example of a licky mat where you can put yogurt, peanut butter, her food, um, and freeze it. And then she has to work through to get all the little food out of the little like compartments that you can see, but also it keeps again, some type of mental enrichment, but you can also use, um, a towel. I'm going to show you a towel here in a second where you can actually put the food in the towel and she has to dig through it. She loved absolutely loved working on towel work. Um, she would love to dig in it. She'd love to burrow herself into it. <laughs> like she is comical. Um, but you can also use a cupcake tin. You can use a cardboard box. You can use paper tube towels. Um, you can really use just about anything. It's just a new format of delivery, um, that helps engage that mental enrichment. Um, and that's basically what I'm explaining here. So in just a second, um, what we're going to talk about is our core skills. Um, I'll again narrate what, what's going on so you can see what's happening. <laughs> and I'm talking about zoomies. Um, and then we go from here again. I'm so sorry. The sound didn't record initially on this video. It's always a bummer when this doesn't work out. It's like once every two weeks, some technology mishap happens. Um, but, uh, give us a second and we'll start talking about our skills. Okay. So when you do name game, and this is what I'm explaining, name game is leave it, come, sit, and focus all rolled into her name as a command. The idea behind name game is getting them to engage with you. It's a check-in. Um, and that checking in with you is the ultimate. So you can use a small piece of treat. Um, and what you're going to do is say her name only once. Um, so you're going to say Olive, and then you can lure her or help her come across, but she has to come and sit in front of you and give you eye contact. Um, so I called her name. She sits. And I'm going to reward. Yes, good girl. And she gets a treat. And then you walk away and you repeat the thing. So I'm going to call her. And sometimes because she is a puppy, she does still need a little visual help. So that's where you can use your hand like you have a treat and you pull it up. Um, just like you're asking for a sit command, but you're not saying it verbally. You're doing it physically. And you can see her nose kind of right there. She pulled up at that. That visual helps her focus on, ah, yes, this is what I'm doing. Or, ah, this is what I need to do. Um, do this little times throughout your day. It will really make an impact. This is one of those foundational skills that makes a world of difference with your dog. Um, and it's probably one of the most simple, which is probably why it's the hardest <laughs> command for most um, handlers to reinforce and practice. But it should become second nature after a couple a couple weeks honestly um and you can see where she's totally disengaged she's sniffing she's doing her thing um and when i call her she comes direct to me and if she doesn't listen we're going to give her a negative marker of uh uh and then call the name again 
I don't remember what I'm saying here, so I do apologize. But I think this is where I'm going to say Olive. You can see she's sitting and waiting. Um, this will help with the demand barking. This also will help with her um, nibbling on you guys. Now, we did do body focus commands. So we worked on sit. We worked on down. Now, the funny thing about little dogs um, is sometimes you don't know they're laying down or sitting because they're so short to the ground. Um, so you can do puppy push-ups to help her go up and down. So she really owns the mechanics of what she's supposed to do. We also did touch. Um, and apologies, we may have a few little kissing sessions in the middle of this. Um, so touch is a nose boop, essentially. Her nose bumps your hand. It's a great redirection tool. It's a good introduction tool for trick training, but it's also a great just, hey, can we do something else on a positive note? Now, she does have paw as well. I think you guys definitely taught her that skill, um, but she's phenomenal at giving you paw and honestly both paws. Um, but the idea behind this is just to get her focus and knowing where she's putting her body on certain times. And what was funny when I was recording this is that when we're working with Olive, Olive is so smart. She's anticipatory. So she sits and looks at me like, I'm ready. And she does like her, the backward ears flip, like her go mode. <laughs> she is ready to go. Um, but here I'm going to explain place. Now, place is the same as our stay command. Um, I like to teach it, especially for puppies in a three-dimensional capacity so that they, they know that they're off the ground. It's like dog island and that there are four boundaries that they can't cross on. Um, it doesn't have to be a dog cot. It can be a dog bed. It can be a blanket. It can be a rug. It doesn't really matter. It's just something that's physically off the ground. When she is a little older and more consistent with you guys with this place command, then we can put her on the ground and ask her place. Um, but teaching it this way is a, I have found that there is more sustainability in the command and longevity of her maintaining this command. So what you're going to do is you're going to lower her on there. You're going to do a flat hand of telling her place, and then you work on your distance, distraction, duration, or your thresholds. Um, now she doesn't get to come off of this cot until you give her a release command. For her, the release command is okay. Um, and this is where I'm demonstrating the distraction part. So um, when you give that release, you're going to take that treat and toss it. So, okay. And she gets to run off the cot. I don't want you to do a finisher where she has to come off and sit. Um, because what we want her to really understand is there's, I'm holding this and then I can release this. I get to run. So pause, run. When we have those mechanics really ingrained, then we can add a finisher when she's a little bit older. Um, but what you're going to do again is you're going to lure her up there. You're going to ask her for a place and then you can work on leave it skills. You can combine those skills where she knows she can't come off of it. We did this with balls. We did this with people. We did this with dogs. Um, and if she does try to come off of it, you can either put your body in front of it. Like I put my foot slightly in front of her and said, uh, uh, you can also just give her an, uh, uh. Um, but we always redirect. So see right here where she's like, I'm going to come off. I'm like, uh, uh, place. And then she sits automatically. She knows the expectation. Now when a, and then she gets released and she gets to have the smorgasbord of things because she got released. Um, have fun torturing your dog in a healthy, positive way. This is one of my favorite commands. Um, it's also one of my favorite commands to integrate in your day to day. So you're taking out, um, the, um, Unloading your dishwasher, you're taking groceries in from your car, you're taking out the trash. Ask your dog to place while you're doing simple tasks like this to integrate it. So will they hold there until you're done and you release them? Um, and what's so funny about all of it is that you see this anticipatory behavior? She's like, I'm ready. I know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> without even me having to ask it. Um, but when I tell her place, you should be able to walk around. And this is me talking about it. Now, I'm okay with a dog wiggling a little bit on a place caught because it's defined boundary. Um, when she is older, it is something we need to be mindful of, especially when we work on on the ground place. Um, I have seen dogs that like to scoot with their butts on the ground still. And I can foresee all of being that smart, <laughs> that intelligent. Um, now, if you ask her for a place, the expectation is a sit. If you ask her for a down place, specifically a down place, she needs to stay in that down. That is a lot harder for her to maintain. Um, it's definitely something she can do, but if she's sitting and you ask for place and then she lays down, that's a pleasing behavior. That's her going above and beyond for you guys. Um, but place is something that you practice little times throughout your day and she doesn't get to come off it until she released. Now she does not get a treat, when she goes up onto that place cot or rug or ottoman, it doesn't really matter what you ask her to be on. Right there, that's pleasing behaviors. 
Um, now this is where I'm talking about her scooting with her butt, but see, she laid down without me commanding it. That is her like, I've got this cool. I'm ready. Um, she really does own this behavior. Um, and she tolerates it in, I would say low to medium thresholds very, very well, high thresholds. It's still a work in progress, but for her age, that's kind of what I expect. So like if we ask her place at Home Depot, she'll do it, but she struggles with maintaining it for more than two minutes. In the lobby with all those dogs and distractions, she holds it for at least five minutes um, because she knows that expectation. So that's where she's taking practice. And when we integrate her into your day to day, that's where if you guys go out to a local dog patio, if you go to a coffee shop, she'll build up that repetition with you of just settling and being in place while you're there. And ideally, excuse me, this command is you put your dog in place, you go inside Starbucks, you get your drink and you come back out and your dog is still there. That's the expectation with this. Um, so instead of it being stay, I like to teach this place command. Again, if you find yourself saying stay more often, we can definitely do that, but this is where play starts. Um, now here I'm going to talk about our leave it command. Now leave it is a general disengagement. It can be toys, treats, food, dogs, birds, it doesn't matter what it is. Leave it is really to check in with the human than with the, um, than just like the, the leave it command itself. Because usually what happens when we just teach leave it is that dogs um, kind of slink away like, oh, okay, I guess it's taken away from me. And what we want her to know is that leave it's actually a fun command. Leave it means I get to check with my human because we're going to do something else instead, um, which is kind of flipping the perspective of it a little bit on the human perspective. Um, now, when you use leave it, she does not automatically get to take the item. And I don't teach a take it. What we like to do is have a release of okay. So I'm going to grab a couple treats and demonstrate. <clears throat> and when I drop that treat, I step in front of her and I tell her, leave it. And then I say, yes, good girl. And I can walk away from her. Now I'm going to put the treats on the chair. So can you put your food on a coffee table, go in the kitchen, grab your drink and come back and the food's still there. That's the idea behind this. You can do leave it in many ways to integrate it. Um, and I'm rewarding her. Yes, good girl. And see how she's ready. Like, okay, okay, now I get it. And I'm like, uh -uh, leave it. And she just, she checks in with me. That's what we want you to have for a leave it. Because sometimes she may be able to get it. Sometimes she may not be able to get it. It's a gambling game, but the check-in is what we want. Um, when she's barking at people in the lobby because she's nervous, I use her name, but I can also use leave it and that redirection to check in with me to help her maintain, ah, right, this is what I'm supposed to do. And you can kind of see as we're doing this and I'm teaching her these skills, look at her body language, look at her tail. She's so excited. <laughs> now <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate how to do a recall. <laughs> I tossed a treat so I would get her away from me. Essentially recall is olive and then using the word come and you're as excited as possible as you can be. Think of it like a party. Um, and when she comes to you, I want you to rub on her, grab her, kind of be like you're grabbing her like she escaped because what we want is her to get comfortable being kind of manhandled for lack of a better term. Um, because eventually we'll get a nice finisher where she sits in front of you. But the focus of this is to, she comes because it's the best thing in the world, no matter if there's a bird or distraction. Um, that's really what we want for that recall practice. Um, now she does like to jump up in arms and that's totally okay, especially in this type of thing, because we want to make it, woohoo, you came! And then you can move on and go on to something else. Um, recall is an immediate, much faster name game essentially. So which is why I would say practicing your name game is so important because it lays the foundation for that recall. Um, and yeah, that makes sense. Um, I talk a little bit more about this and again, uh, now this is where I'm going to grab the leash and we're going to talk about, uh, uh, leash walking. Now, leash walking is one of those things where it's a lot easier to teach in person. And I do apologize. Um, a couple times in the video where I was like, I'm so sorry, this is so much easier to teach in person. Um, and she does really well on the leash with me. <laughs> so I had to like force her to be like pulley and crazy and stuff like that. But, um, we'll definitely cover this when we're in person in your departure lesson. So her right as a dog is to walk right next to you. That's her right as a dog. Um, when you have this leash, you're going to use a tug and release, or you're going to walk backwards on her. Um, now what I'm going to do is it's really, uh, your fingers as a tug and release, not a whole body pull. And that pull right there, I threw a tree is not what we want and see how she sat back. She knows, Oh, right. There's no, there's not supposed to be any pressure. That is key in teaching these behaviors. 
she has to come back and check in with you. It is a privilege to get free reign or a privilege to get all foot, all six feet of the leash. It's a expectation or it is a right to be right next to me. So when you're walking along with, with her, um, see this, this is where you give her a little tug and release. And she just stops immediately and looks at me. Now, if we're on our walks and just going along, she just kind of slows her pace and goes in line with me. Now, um, we're going to go back and forth a couple of times and then I demonstrate a secondary technique. So we're going to come back around in just a second. Here we go. So see how she's walking nice and smooth. You can see the looseness of the leash. This is what we want. Um, now I'm trying to get her to pull on me a little bit so I can show you a second technique. Um, so this is where I'm going to toss a treat. So she goes after it. <laughs> so say this is a bird, um, something she's really excited about. Um, this is where you can, um, do a tug and release, or you can walk back a couple steps. She's with you. Yes, good girl. Olive. And then you can go forward. And then when she pulls, you drop that leash, walk backwards a couple steps, and then you go forward. She knows, think of it like a hula hoop around you. She has to stay in that hula hoop with you. Um, she does get this context very, very well. And this is where I'm talking about the hula hoop. She really does understand it. It's just about teaching her, Hey, no, no pulling on the leash and you have to be nice and calm. Um, again, this is something that makes a lot more sense in person and we'll definitely tackle in person. Um, um, because her knowing her right versus a privilege and especially for our normal walks versus going hiking, we can set those expectations with you. She really does get it and she still gets distracted, but is way better than what she was started at. So from here, um, I really want to get you guys to focus on name game and place for your two skills. The first couple of days before we see our departure lesson, um, that's what I want you to do focus on her paying attention to you and looking up, but also boundary work. Um, your little girl is so freaking smart. So let's get her to understand that expectation and she will shine in knowing what she now has learned. And you've already had a good foundation already. Um, I definitely want us to get scheduled for that departure lesson. Ideally this first week she's home just so that you really set you guys up for success. Um, but I know schedules can be kind of wonky. So let's get that name game in place and then we'll work from there. Try the puzzle feeders, uh, morning and night, or just one of the time frames um, to get that mental enrichment going. And otherwise it has been absolute pleasure working with this little girl. I know she's gotten a lot of snuggles from her daycare staff, from myself, from our other trainer, Ashley. Like she's been a love to have and a pleasure to have. Um, but let me know if you have any questions and, um, I know she's going to be so excited to see you on Sunday. Cool. Um, we'll be in touch.